Hey, hey, hey. Uh, we're getting into the thick of it now with these linear equations and graphing lines. Um, I've said this multiple times before, but this graphing line stuff is super usable in many different fields of study. So, yeah, let's pay attention. And I'm going to, I'm going to go quick, which is why I wrote this word quick here, because I, the last video I watched was, I thought it was kind of slow, and, and if those of you that maybe if I go too quick, you can always just put the, you know, go back a little bit and, and re-watch that. So, so let's get started, and I wanted to start with this. Why do we call them ski slopes anyway? Because it's a slope, right? So if I said, hey, I don't know about going on this one, because some of you guys, or a lot of you guys are way better skiers than I am, so... If you're going to take me down a run, I was like, uh, what's the slope? Well, we talk about that in terms of, oh, this is green, this is a blue, it's a black, double black, whatever. But if I was like, no, what's, you're like, what's the steepness? What's this slope like, this ski slope? On a scale of 1 to 10, how steep is this? Now, 10 would be really steep, right? 1 would be, eh, not so steep. So, can you actually assign a number to the steepness of a slope. Guess what? In math, we have. There's a way to do that. And I'm going to show you how that works um, in just a second. But let's start with this. Graphs of linear equations. This is 11.4. You can graph a function by plotting ordered pairs from a table of values. Okay, so check this out. Here's the function. y equals 3x plus 2. This is like a vending machine. y always represents the output, so we're solved for that. Um, X represents the input. Okay, we just chose these random inputs here, just randomly. Now we're going to choose some out, or we're going to plug them in and find what the outputs are. If you put negative 4 in here, you get negative 10 for Y. Right? Now, if we plot all of these ordered pairs in this plane, we will see a pattern. Let me move this up. Okay, so negative 4, negative 10. I'm not going to draw on here, but just put my my finger right there. Negative 2, ooh, what would y be? Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. So y would be negative 4, so negative 2, negative 4. Okay, and then 0, 2, 0, 2. Does that look like it's making a pattern? Yeah, it is. And what would the slope of that be? Well, you guys already know that this is a positive slope because it's angling up to the right, right? So we know it's positive, but would it be, I mean, do we talk about it in terms of like on scale of 1 to 10? In math, no. Um, but we do talk about it in terms of fractions. 1 to 10, by the way, is a fraction. If I said, yeah, this one's like a super steep slope, it's like a 10, that would be 10 over 1. So like, it goes 10 feet down, 1 foot over. 10 feet down, 1 foot over. Um, that would be really steep, right? But that's not how this is going to work. We'll get back to that later. Connect the points. What pattern do you notice? Oh, it is a line. It's a line. This function, when graphed, gives you a line. All right, so moving on from that. Linear equations, and I need to adjust this just a touch. Oh. Linear equations. In this activity, you graph solutions of a linear equation. The linear equation in two variables is an equation in which the variables appear in separate terms. Okay, look right here. Man, I guess you can't see that. These are examples of equations, because there's an equal sign, but they're not linear. Why? Because for a linear equation, there are two variables. How many? Two. Thank you. But they have to be in separate terms. Right now, this is one term. If you've got to multiply a time sign between something, they are one term. So this is not a linear equation. And linear equations have two variables, variables appear in separate terms, and each variable occurs only to the first power, r to the 1, t to the 1, the 1 is understood. Um, but these are not to the first power, they're to the second power. Or if you saw x to the cubed or something, that wouldn't be a linear equation. These are examples of true linear equations. We've got two variables and two variables only. They appear in separate terms, even here, right? They're on the same side, but they're still in separate terms. 
We could solve that for Q, couldn't we? Or we could solve it for P. And uh, they're all raised to the first power. Okay, so this is so, so um, simple. And let me be careful when I say that because, you know, it might take you a second to get it. But, oh, by the way, you see I'm wearing a different hat for you this time. <laughs> Not the same old, uh, you know, baseball looking hat. Okay, this next thing I'm about to show you. Remember it for the rest of the days that you are in school, okay? If you ever need to graph any, any equation, and you will, because right now we're just starting with straight lines, but someday you'll do parabolas, and you might do exponential curves, and, and there's even these, these funky cardioid type, there's all different crazy shapes you can graph. If you can just remember that to graph something, all you got to do is make a table of values. Make a what? Table of values. To graph anything, you just need to make a table of values. So watch this. Wow. Graph that. All right, if I told you, hey, here's the equation, graph it. Is it lin linear? Yeah, you know this is going to give you a line because there's two variables. Both raised to the first power, they're in separate, term, in separate terms. All you got to do is make a table of values. Here is a table of values. Put the x on top, y on the bottom. You can choose whatever x input values you want. You can input a million if you really want to make a graph that big. Okay, but this person said, hey, I'm going to go by zero and I'm going to go a couple below, a couple above type thing. So if x is zero, what is 1 half times 0? It's 0 plus 1. Y would be 1. If x is 2, 1 half times 2 is 1 plus 1 is 2. See how they're getting the outputs to go with their chosen inputs? Now we can graph these. Now some of you were confused last time. You're not graphing negative 4, negative 2. No, the ordered pairs go like this. Negative 4, negative 1. Negative 2, 0. 0, 1. All right? If you don't know how to plot those points, pay better attention in class or come ask me. Negative 2, 0. I'll show you real quick. Negative 2 would be here. That's always the x, the horizontal. Negative 2, 0. Well, don't go anywhere in the y. It's 0. So there's the point. They graphed all of these. They plotted all these points. And then look. It obviously makes a pattern. It is a line. That's a positive slope. Hmm. It's what would that slope be? How much are they rising and how much are they running? Hmm. Now, I'm just kind of talking ahead right now because you don't need to know that yet, but it's coming. All right. So that's how you graph it. Just as simple as that. Make a table of values. Okay. <clears throat> Look at, here's some example problems that you might have to graph. Could you graph this one? You can make a table of values for that, right? Could you make a table of values for this one? Yes. Could you do it for this one? Mm-hmm. Well, now look at this one. Y minus X equals 6. We better take a look at that real quick. This is not solved for Y, is it? So we would have to solve it for Y first. Well, you don't have to. I mean, I could just say, hmm, let's see here. If X is 0, Y minus 0 is... Uh, or y minus 0 is still just y, so y would be 6. And if x was 1, y minus 1, and then I'd have to add 1 to both sides, so y would be 7. But the easiest way, guys, is to just solve it real quick for y. How would I solve this for y? I'd have to, this is y minus x, I'd have to add x to both sides. Right, so y equals 6 plus X. There's my function rule, or my function, or my vending machine. It is solved for Y. And now, and typically we write it like this, Y equals X plus 6, right? Now we could say, oh, if X is 0, then Y is 6. X is 1, 1 plus 6 is 7, so on and so forth. You could come up with a table of values pretty quick. You could graph that pretty quick, right? Now when you guys graph these problems, you better tell me, which axis is which? This is the y. Vertical is always the y. Horizontal is the x. And you better tell me the scale you're using. 
on these uh, numbers here. Um, if this indeed is just one, two, three, then give me a little one right there and a one right there. But if this is two, four, six, you better put a two, four, two. I don't expect you to number them all all the way up. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I just go every, I number every other one or something. All right. But you better tell me the scale. Okay. So let's look at this one. How can we use the graph of a linear equation? Sue's hair is three inches long. Wow, Sue doesn't have very long hair, does she? If her hair grows half inch per month, you can model the length of her hair in inches using this equation. L probably stands for length, don't you think? The length of her hair equals one half an inch per month, so one half times M, however many months she's letting it grow, plus the original three she already has, okay, where M is the time in months. Does that make sense to you? Keep looking at that until that does make sense. You should have been able to come up with that equation. Her length equals one half times the number of months plus three. So how do we graph it? We choose, uh, we, we make a table of values. Now, the how do I know which one's the input and which one's the output? Does the M go on top here or does the L go on top? Well, if it's solved for L, um, whatever the equation is solved for, that's your output. Because your vending machine side is over here, your input side, okay? And then this is your output. So, input goes on top, output goes on bottom. Choose some random values for your input, find out what the corresponding output would be, plot those points, and then connect the dots. Right? Now, notice this graph y or the l axis the y axis represents the length of her hair and m was the time in months remember we are relating something to something else we're relating the length of her hair to the time in months so as the months go by to the right her hair is getting longer and longer and this graph would not go farther to the left because her um you can't go back in time, right? You can't go back in time. Can't go to negative one month. So that's the basic idea for today, except let's go back to our ski slope example for a second. This is how you graph linear equations. You make a table of values, you plot the points, you connect the dots. It's not too bad, right? But somehow, I get higher level math students that still get confused on this next concept. Um, if I, okay, we ski down the slope, cool. Um, and we get to the bottom and we're staring up at the big lodge, okay? We're looking at the wall of the ski lodge, okay? This is the wall, straight up and down. I said, hey, what do you think the slope of that ski lodge is? The slope of the wall. Is a straight vertical line, could, would you even call it a slope? Is it sloping at all? No, it's not. So a straight vertical line, we call that um, an undefined slope. Now here I am talking again about slope, and you don't really have to know it for this section. I think it's maybe coming tomorrow. Um, but let me show you how to graph or what the equation for a vertical line looks like and what the equation for a horizontal line looks like. So it's right here. Some linear equations have only one variable. Uh, the graphs of these equations are vertical or horizontal lines. Oh, they only have how many variables? One. Wait, I thought linear equations had two variables. Well, some only have one. If it only has one, it is a vertical line or a horizontal line. So, the graph of x equals some number a, okay, pretend a is any number, is the vertical line passing through a0. Now, this is always counterintuitive to my students, and it was to me too. The graph of, let's say, x equals 2 would be a vertical line passing through 2, 0. 2, 0, okay. 
Now, when you see the, the x term, you're typically thinking horizontal, like the x-axis is horizontal. But this is actually a vertical line. Why? Because watch this. Here's my graph. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, one. I'm giving you my scale here. Okay. Where is two, zero? It's right here. Two over, zero up, zero down. For this little equation, x equals 2, the x distance, x is always 2. So no matter where I go in this whole land of uh, coordinate planeville, no matter where I go, I have to be 2 away from the y-axis. 2 away. 2 away. 2 away. 2 away. x is always positive 2. What kind of line am I actually making if I connect these dots? A vertical line. Yeah. Can you tell me any point on this line where the x-coordinate wouldn't be 2? No. Up here, this would be 2, 3. Down here, this would be 2, negative 1. Right there. Or 2, negative 2. x is always 2. You see how that works? And conversely, that's a cool word. Try and use that one. Like vice versa, or flip that around. If you've got y equals negative 7, you go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 7 on the y-axis, and y is always going to be negative 7 in this, if you're graphing that. y is negative 7 here, y is negative 7 there, there. What kind of line does this y equals something make? It makes a horizontal line. Okay? So, you might have to just remember this, graph of, uh, or flip back to this, write this down in your notes perhaps. x equals some number, find the coordinate of that number, comma, 0. y equals some number, 0, comma, that number, b. Horizontal line for y, vertical line for x. Kind of sounds weird, but they're opposite. Okay? There, now you learned it. Cool. Here's a couple examples. This blue line is y equals 4. In fact, they're going to show you a line here. Boom! Right over here, watch. Write the equation of the line. But this line has no slope. It's, uh, uh, man, how would I do this? Well, um, this is a horizontal line, so I know it's going to be y equals. What is y always on this line? y is always negative 3. So, y equals negative 3. Done. This one. x is always 5. x equals 5. Done. Right? Don't be, uh, I mean, this looks really simple, right? x equals 5. But that's the answer. That's it. Okay? Alrighty then. Um, that's that. We'll see you next time.